Hi, this is Jeannie Ortega with Breathecast, and in studio today, I am joined by the lead cast of the upcoming film, Where Hope Grows, scheduled to hit theaters May 15th. Thank you guys for joining me, David DeSanctis, Christopher Palaha, and Michaeli Miller. Thank Give it you. up. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. I mean, I love the film, and I can't wait for our audience out there to see the film. But Chris, I'm going to start with you. Tell us about Where Hope Grows. Um, Where Hope Grows is, it really is a beautiful movie about faith, about hope, about second chances, mm -hmm. about redemption. Um, I'll give you a real quick synopsis. My character is a guy named Calvin Campbell, who was a Major League Baseball player. He failed out of the major. His daughter, played by McKinley Miller, uh, he and I, she and I have like this broken relationship. Mm -hmm, it's not a great mm -hmm. father-daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. And in the film, you'll see my character hit rock bottom, where he meets David DeSanctis' character, Produce, mm -hmm. who <laughs> works in the produce department at <laughs> the grocery store. And my character sees David, who, um, and David in real life has Down syndrome, and his character has Down syndrome, but that's irrelevant to the story. My character just sees somebody who, from the outward appearances, looks like life dealt him a pretty rough hand. Mm -hmm. um, and he wonders, like, well, the guy is so hopeful, mm -hmm. and he's so positive, and his outlook on life is just so uplifting. What's his secret? Mm -hmm. And what we come to find out is that Produce is a Christian, and he goes to church, and he's like, well, why don't you come to church with me? Find mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And it really does become this um, story about an unexpected friendship and hope and second shots. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep it right there um, to kind of ask you about your character. I mean, I know what it is to have fame and lose it, and then you're, you're faced with what's going to happen or what should I do. Most people, unfortunately, turn to a substance or, or a person and just become really broken yeah. and insecure. Yeah. How do you, um, or why do you think that happens, number one? And then how, do, how does someone in that situation not go there? I mean, I think it's human, um, but I also think it's unique in, in our Western culture. We've sort of given this, um, this sort of universal goal of like, in order to be somebody, you have to be famous or mm -hmm. you have to achieve a certain amount of success, and that includes you know, being well known in your community, you're having a lot of wealth, or, you know, and then you have these social sites that sort of mm -hmm. proliferate this idea of unless I'm ubiquitous, unless I'm out there in everybody's face, I don't yeah. matter. I don't. How exist. many likes do you have? Yeah. <laughs> and there's a real problem with fame because it's like a drug and it mm -hmm. is an addiction. And I think mm -hmm. with a lot of baseball players, this movie's resonated because it is your identity. You're, you start out in high school playing baseball and it becomes the thing you're great at. And then you go to college, and you're great at it. And then you're getting paid to play. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it dries up. And then what, who are you? So if mm -hmm. you're not a baseball player, or if you're not a rock star, yeah. or if you're not an actor, or if you're not a politician, mm -hmm. then what is your identity? Um, and unfortunately, I think, and, and what's interesting about this film is it has resonated with so many uh, pro athletes, because they're like, awesome. I know a lot of guys. Who, yeah. th it's this guy. Yes. And, and even for actors, you know, we're in this really interesting business where the very top of the food chain, like Brad Pitt, and you've got these, you've got this very thin, and then there's a whole bunch of people working so hard mm. to be a part of the, just be, to be a part of the story. And I think if you lose your focus, um, it's so easy to turn to drugs, and it's so easy to turn to um, just, like you said, dark things, whether it's another person and, mm -hmm. and, and interacting in, in, a, in, a, in a way that is corrosive to the soul, or if it's just losing your soul. Yeah. Um, and I think, for me, the, the, the prophylactic measure to take, and it's been my sort of safe house, uh, is my faith. Mm. And I think that if you, and then it, it starts to beg the question, you know, what is the purpose? Like, why are you, why do you need to be telling a story? Why do you need to be playing baseball? And there's a great movie, Chariots of Fire, I don't know if you've mm -hmm, seen it, yes, but Eric yes. Little is the lead character, and he runs, and he says, when I run, I feel God's joy. Mm. He's given me a gift. Mm. And I think that, like... The motivation yeah, behind Yeah, there's a motivation about... And so if you're a great baseball player, and you play, and every time you play, you feel God's joy, then you should play baseball. Or if you're yeah. an actor, and every time you get on stage or in front of cameras, yeah. or and you do your thing, and you feel God's joy, and he's using you, then I think you're going to be okay. But if it becomes self-serving, it becomes a really dangerous, yep, and it really truly is disaster. a dangerous, yeah, it's a dangerous yeah. road because there's so many temptations. And, and unless you have that spiritual fortitude to sort of stay on the, yep. the straight and narrow, and that's why I think we see so many people die to drugs and, yeah. and even amazing so people, sad. you know, like Elvis Presley, Absolutely. who was an amazing, like, Absolutely. you knew he had a heart for God, but yeah. he's still, like, 
ended up alone. Oh, I love your answer. Yeah. That's, that's great. Well, David, <laughs> I want to ask you because in the film, um, his character meets your character, and he is in a very unlovely place. But your character showing him love, showing a person, an unlovely person, love, despite whatever it is, the mood that he's in, is what helps change his life. Um, why do you think it's important to do that when you, when you are confronted with somebody that's not in a good place? How does love have the power to change that? What would you say? Because the love is so powerful. Love, love is the, uh, one of the universal languages. Mm -hmm. And it also it does entitles to to um, look onto our abilities instead, instead of our disabilities, mm. and and also to stop the R word, that of using the R word. Yes. But to end it. And I, I'm going to stay right there because I know that you kicked off a campaign shattering stereotypes, exactly. and it's about that. Um, and I wanted to know what are some stereotypes you you're breaking, or how can we help break those stereotypes with you? Well, I've already shadowed two of them already. Mm -hmm. The one of them is that I was the first Down syndrome employee from uh, Trader Joe's of having a job there. Wow! And also, I'm the very first lead actor of having this role in this movie of Where Hope Grows. And also, I want to break another stereotype, too, for a Down syndrome actor to become a Down syndrome director. Ooh, wow, you heard it here, guys. <laughs> That's incredible, David. And you know what? We're going to pray for that, and we're going to continue to just breaks uh, you know shatter stereotypes with you you That's know awesome. and I love that thank you so much You're welcome. um Michaeli, I want to ask you because in the film your broken relationship with your dad is um extremely you know it's it's detrimental to your character and even in real life you know you have families that are like that mm -hmm. I know right I've lived that yeah. and I know the impact that that makes on a person the stability and the instability mm -hmm. can you tell us about that and how important it is to have a stable environment at home I mean right. for our, our audience who probably you know they'll see this movie and they see themselves in some mm -hmm. of these characters I, I actually uh, went to a screening recently and a, the most adorable little girl who was about my age came up to me and I shouldn't call her little but <laughs> she came up to me and she was just in tears and she was like I just want you to let you know like that is what I'm going through at home wow. and it is so amazing to see that it had a happy ending spoiler alert but she was like it was so so like it, it gave me hope and, and and it watching that I was watching myself and and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and so I think that it is such an important storyline and such an important message that a lot of girls can relate to and just know that if you have faith, like it, it, there is the light at the end of the tunnel, and it, it mm. can get better. That's incredible. Yeah, you, Kaylee. of course. And I want to park right there, and then we're going to wrap it up. But about faith, mm -hmm. I mean, this movie at the end of the day is that. I mean, you sharing your faith with his character is what makes all the difference. So, Chris, can you tell us a little bit about that and how important? faith and believing in God and you know doing the what seemed to be like the unpopular thing to do oh I'm gonna go to church you know yeah. how it you know it, it really does not only on film but it really does change people's lives yeah I mean my my story with faith is I grew up my, my dad was Catholic like to the point where my uncle was a Catholic priest wow. um, God bless his soul he's passed on but he uh, mm -hmm. and then my mom was always um, sort of just found herself in evangelical circles. So she was just kind of, she mm -hmm. bounced from mm -hmm. just different churches. And I remember um, I, used to, I used to pray as a little kid, like a little tiny kid. Uh, and just, I had this one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus and I would wow. just talk to him and pray about things and, and have this really bizarre dream when I was a little kid where I was gonna be standing in front of a red curtain. And so I always felt like that was my, like I was gonna be an actor or whatever. And what was crazy is there was a red curtain in my high school theater thing. And that was like, how, that was sort of the thing that launched the ship. Mm. But in my, my, and then I did this really bizarre thing. Um, in my junior year in high school, I was praying and I said, God, things are really, really amazing. And I wanna see if it's you working in my life or if it's me. Mm. And so it was this weird sort of pride that crept in. And mm. I said, I'm not gonna pray for six months and I'm gonna see what happens. And then it was like a six year Ooh. sort of, 
like just kind of call it my wandering in the desert period. Six and years. Yeah, I came to New York City. Six months turned into six, <laughs> six years. Six years. <laughs> but it was interesting because then God all of a sudden, as, as my acting got like started to heat up and, and things started to open up professionally for me, it was like God just kind of knocked on the door of my heart and was like, hey, mm -hmm. come back. I want you back. And uh, I went on this really interesting, long, beautiful journey. Um, but, you know, I love... I love Christ, and mm -hmm. He gives me so much hope and mm -hmm. so much stability in my life to the point where I'll have TV shows and I'll be waiting to find out if they're going to get picked up or not. And I'll take jogs to like ABC or CW and I'll literally lay hands on the building and I'll just <laughs> in the name pray. Of Jesus. <laughs> and I'll just like be praying and I'll think if anyone sees me, and I've actually been caught. Like I went to CW and the <laughs> vice president of CW came and she's like, What are you doing here? And I had my hand on the door, on the wall, and I was like, Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm praying for the show. And she's like, You're what? But I've had like, wow. there was a show called um, Misguided that was for ABC, and Ashton Kutcher produced it. And literally, we were on the schedule, we were off the schedule, we were on the schedule, we were off the schedule, we were on the schedule, we were off the schedule, and Friday night we were off the schedule. But I was like, I, we, and I just prayed, and my wife and I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And we got a call Sunday from the director, and he said, like, Chris, and he's not, he had, he was not a person of faith at all, and, but he knew like where I was and where I was financially and just like all my needs. And he said, I'm calling you first, like before anybody else, because what just happened is literally a miracle. He's like, I cannot explain it, but we're picked up. We're doing wow. like 13 episodes. You know, we heard this incredible news and we just pulled over and we're like, wow, that's, it, you know, it's amazing. So for me in my life, like, especially as an actor, I just walk, I, I you know, my need is so great. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm always looking for a job. <laughs> um, that, you know, it's just, it's a nice relationship because it keeps me tethered. And so, and, and what I love about Where Hope Grows. I was going to say, yeah. and ladies and gentlemen, that's Where Hope Grows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the beginning right yeah, there. It is, it really is. That's incredible. And what I love about the movie is that it's, um, it is about a Christian character who has this profound effect on a family. Mm. Um, but it's not like a lot of Christian movies, which tend to sort of preach to the choir and kind of hit you right on the nose and say, hey, we're a Christian film for Christians, and it excludes everybody else. Yeah. This movie's really, like, her character almost is like, I mean, there's like a serious scene. She's a virgin, but she's willing, she's trying to like navigate this, she's trying to find love in this yeah. relationship with this boy who's just a jerk and he's mm -hmm. not right. My guy's a drunk. I mean, he's like a fall down drunk. And it's a dark, there's a lot of elements yeah. where you're like, wow, this is It's a real life. Yeah, right, for people right. who are broken hearted and who yeah. are lost and who need, you know, something. And then, you know, you're, David's character who's just so, such a bright light and mm -hmm. does bring, I mean, it is funny too, because you'll see Calvin like kind of slumping through the movie and then all of a sudden David comes on yes. and he's just like, hey, he's how are you doing salt. today? Yes. Yeah, and it's just this beautiful childlike yes. faith that like radiates. And, and David, so. I, I want to I wanna end on this note. I know you got some moves and I've <laughs> seen them. We've all seen them. So can you, can you bust a move for us? Do it. Can you do it Come on, music, David. Like, you got it. What Come, on. Give a beat? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Come <laughs> on. Not happening. <laughs> Where oh, hope grows. That, that was shocking. I thought Are this you burned. shy? No, I'm not shy. All right. Well, Where Hope Grows in theaters, May 15th. Make sure you go, You guys go out, check it. It's incredible. It's, it's about this beautiful family and the light who just shares Jesus with them. And it's awesome. <laughs> not, not even a... Not even a Nothing. Come on, come on. No. Do it with me. No. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. See you next time.